All right, gentlemen, we are back. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapters one through eight. Now, for homework, you are just describing the early church as seen in Acts. It's a level one homework, really simple. Just need you to use some examples and your descriptive abilities. Don't worry about reading all of chapters one through eight. Just focus on, um, yeah, whatever you see fit in terms of describing the early church. Let's begin in prayer. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. It's a new one from St. Ignatius, uh, Prayer of Generosity. Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and to not ask for reward, save that of knowing that I am doing your will. St. Ignatius of Loyola, pray for us. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. New unit, new unit goal, new unit question. We're evaluating the apostles, motives, mindset, and message as it applies to the first century church and today. Gentlemen, this should definitely remind you of the return period motives, mindset, and message of the post-exilic leaders, whether that be Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, or the Maccabees. Oh, Judith tossed in there as well. So we are looking at the unit question of what did the early church think it was up to, and how does that apply to us today? This is the period that we are still living in. It's been 2,000 years since the Acts of the Apostles, and yet we are still in the same period, and this is the last time period in salvation history. So let's take a look at it on this next screen. So we're in the Acts of the Apostles of the age of the church. This is when Paul will write his letters. The other letters that we began the year with, Peter and John and Colossians, which was written by Paul, um, in James, those are all taken out of this time period. So we're back where we started. We started in media res way back in the beginning of the year, in the middle of things. Now we're hopping right back into the middle of things, right back into history. Uh, in the same time period we find ourselves, or at least the same time period in salvation history. It starts with 33 AD, really with the resurrection and Pentecost, which we'll talk about today, and continues on until today. As you can see, there's this reverberation from the little drop uh, of the first wave witness in Jerusalem at Pentecost all the way to the ends of the earth and the apostles' different missions. We're going to read all the way through the Acts of the Apostles. We're going to read two letters by Paul, Romans, and Corinthians, and we are going to dive in for one day right at the end of the year into the book of Revelation, all in order to answer these questions. What did the early church think it was up to, and how does that apply today? And evaluating the apostles' motives, mindset, and message as it applies to the first century church and today. All of what we've learned this year, going back to Genesis, will still be in effect, and then obviously transformed in new ways through that messianic fulfillment. But it's still going to be rushing in the same direction. Let's dive in. Level one exit ticket today. We're starting it off simple. I just want you to be able to describe the early church. Repeat of the do now. There's going to be a lot of information, a lot of my turn, a lot of reading, but the overall bar is pretty straightforward. You need to be able to describe the context and purpose of Acts. That's the bare minimum. That is not the high, uh, that is not the ceiling. That is based the basic floor level. I don't want to have to hold you back uh, with this objective. You can dive in for hours and hours and hours about the context and purpose of Acts, but I need you to be able to prove to me with explanation and examples that you can talk about the basic purpose and context. And finally, describe the early church using examples from these eight chapters and not from elsewhere. Okay? These are key. Describe means you're using vivid, vivid details. You're not speaking in generalities, as I often uh, say. You're speaking in, in the terms that the Bible uses. All right, so my turn. Basic background. What is going on in Acts of the Apostles? This is the context. The context is it's talking about the Acts of the Apostles. Literally, the Acts, the actions of the Apostles. Apostles means the disciples who were sent. So it's talking about their lives and their missions. Now, interestingly, I think a good way to get at this is asking who is the main actor in the Acts of the Apostles? And in the first part of the Acts of the Apostles, it's very clear that Peter is the ringleader. And in the second half of the Acts of the Apostles, it's very clear that Paul is the ringleader. But I'm going to argue for our sake here that neither one is the main character. The main character of the Acts of the Apostles we actually see in chapter 1. The main character of the Acts of the Apostles is the Holy Spirit. Just like Jesus is the main character of the Gospels, the main character of the Acts of the Apostles is, going, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the thing 
the what that is causing all of this, uh, that is enlivening the apostles. So the basic context, background, what is going on is the actions of the Holy Spirit. The purpose or the point of the Acts of the Apostles are many, and it accomplishes many things. It tells the story of the early church. It sets a model for what it means to be church. It shows the struggles of the early church as they adapt from a Jewish religion into something new without fully abandoning the old. What does it accomplish? Well, it accomplishes all those previously stated things. It shows this transition from Judaism to Christianity. It shows the markers, the mindsets, the message of the early church, and it preserves that under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and really shows this first chapter in what will be church history, which you will study next year uh, in your religion class. Pardon the sun in my background, but it feels good. Anywho, so here's what's going on in Acts of the Apostles, some things that I want to highlight. I already mentioned the Holy Spirit in chapter 1, so that's really the main actor. Now, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, is going to address the crowd, and you're going to see the purpose of the Acts of the Apostles. What the Holy Spirit desires is to spread itself, not unlike a virus that is transmitted from person to person. So when Peter addresses this crowd in chapter 2, he'll get the first uh, recipients of the, the message of Christianity and the first converts. Next, we see Peter as, again, this kind of main sub-character. The Holy Spirit's the main character, but under Peter is this sort of um, lead supporting character. Peter will heal a man in chapter 3 miraculously under the power of the Holy Spirit using the name of Jesus. And so this clearly shows that the apostles, those who are sent, Peter and the other members of the Eleven, and eventually Paul, have the Holy Spirit, they're able to act in this person of God, much like we saw Jesus acting in the person of God. Now, the apostles are going to be imprisoned in chapter 5, and they'll miraculously get out of prison, and they'll continue to preach. Uh, I wanted to pr touch briefly on one of the Jewish teachers named Gamaliel. So basically, the apostles keep getting themselves arrested and thrown into jail and beat up, and they're all excited about this because they get to share in the sufferings of Christ. And one of the people that is in charge of the Jews at the time, who's trying to figure out what the heck's going on with Peter and the rest of these guys, um, is named Gamaliel. And the Jews are basically saying, hey, we need to lock these guys up, we need to put them to death. And Gamaliel, one of the leaders, one of the elders, says, hey, look, if this movement isn't from God, well, then it's going to die out itself. So let's not bother with it. Let's just let it run its course. However, if it is from God, nothing we do is going to stop it. And it is going to be accomplished. And in fact, we might find ourselves at odds with God. So Luke records this, what might be called the Gamaliel principle. Leave it alone and see what happens. If it is from God, it's going to succeed. If, it is, if it's not from God, it's going to fail. So that's in chapter 5. Now, chapter 7, we start to get some real action in there. Stephen is going to retell the whole story of uh, creation and redemption in Jesus and the descent of the Holy Spirit and unto himself, and he is going to get stoned to death for this. So the violence that Gamaliel was talking about, uh, the Jews aren't going to listen to Gamaliel. They're going to persecute the church. And that is where we meet Saul at first. Saul, who we become Paul. And so in chapter 8, Saul begins to persecute the church. So now the background of what's going on. Jesus has died and rose from the dead. The Holy Spirit has descended. And the Holy Spirit being the main character of Acts of the Apostles. Now the purpose, it shows what the early church is up to. That is preaching. What the early church is capable of. That is power of the Holy Spirit in miracles. What the, is happening to the early church, including persecution but also the world trying to understand what is going on in this strange movement of new Christian people, followers of Jesus, and their resulting persecution, and finally leads up to Saul. All right, that's it for the first day. Peace. God bless, guys. Talk to you soon.